Okay, so now that we have the kind of basic terminology and mechanics of working with Git branches, now we can start talking about how all this stuff interacts with remote, so something like GitLab. So um, you already are experienced making a remote repo on homework four. You made a, a repo that you're pushing to. That's what we call a remote. Remember, in some sense, there's nothing special about a remote repo. It's just another copy of your repository on another computer. Um, it happens to be GitLab's computers, but it's really just another Git repo. Uh, it has a commit history of its own. Um, now it's mostly, it's not usually the case that someone's like actually on GitLab's computers adding commits, um, but we generally use it as a source of truth. Like we all kind of use that as the, the true copy. Um, and we kind of send changes there. Now, usually when you're working on a team, either on a partner project or working at a company, um, you are all kind of eventually going to merge your changes into that master branch on the remote. That's kind of like how you deploy your changes for the most part. Because once they're in master on the remote, they've kind of, in a lot of sense, like been shipped and now all future changes will be based on that. Now, one thing I'm going to mention, uh, since this repo is going to be, or sorry, this video is kind of about working on a team and kind of what situations you might run into there when you're dealing with remote repositories. I do want to mention that working on a team can be tricky, right? Especially this version control stuff can be a little hard sometimes. And every team establishes slightly different norms about how you should be committing things. What's the process of actually getting changes into master? We can't possibly enumerate all the different policies and norms other different teams use. Um, we're going to show you some common things today that kind of appear in a lot of different places, uh, but always kind of look into the norms of the place you're working and your coworkers as a kind of a reference for how to do whatever you're doing in your context. Um, so we're going to kind of show you some general patterns here and try to explain kind of the mental model of why these things work. And hopefully that'll help you understand any workflow you might be using on your own projects. So as I showed you last time, I've set up a repo on GitLab. I'm calling it the ABC repo. I want to highlight everything I've done in the last two videos has been erased. So kind of ignore the local changes I've made to my repo. Um, I'm going to just ignore those for, for our purpose. All that branch, that feature branch we made, uh, commit C, D, and E, all of those, those don't exist anymore. We're back to our starter point, which is that commit A and B. Now currently, um, GitLab has commits A and B. I'm going to go ahead and clone this repo. So I'm going to clone with this SSH option. That's going to give me a, the ability to easily um, uh, push and pull to GitLab using those SS, SSH keys that you set up for homework four. I'm going to go ahead and type git clone and then this URL. So it's going to clone this repo real quick. I'm going to CD into ABC. And now we're here. Um, so when I do git log now, um, I can now go a bit into what's going on here with when we said head is pointing to master, that means I'm on the master branch, head is kind of where I am, but now I can explain what this origin master is. Origin master is where we think right now the repo on um, GitLab is where it's master branches. So origin is kind of the default name for your remote repository. So here, because I cloned from GitLab, we kind of set up the name of this remote repo as being origin. And so we're saying the master branch on the origin repo is also currently on this commit. Um, so when I go ahead and make a new commit, so let me go ahead and add to file.txt. I'm gonna add the line C, and then I'm going to stage and commit this. So I'm gonna give it the commit message C. Now, when I do this git log, my, uh, again, my head is pointed at master because I just made a commit that advanced my master to commit C. And now this is showing here that on origin master, um, we, they are still on commit B. That is precisely what we mean is when I said, like, if you go back to GitLab right now and nothing's different, that's because um, we haven't updated what's on GitLab. In order to update things on GitLab, we have to, um, uh, push this. Importantly, oh, whoops, let me go back here. Importantly, origin master, kind of like your concept of origin master here, is not being like continuously updated. 
This is just kind of the last time I talked to GitLab, it told me that Origin Master is here. So you're not always getting the most up-to-date version. Uh, we'll show you a command that kind of refreshes your repo so you can see what's on GitLab. But for what I want to work on first is kind of simulating what does it look like to um, work with another person. So I kind of previewed this kind of problem in our last video from last week. But let's kind of work on a project together with Shadowhunter. So let's uh, switch to Shadowhunter. So uh, this is Shadowhunter's uh, repo. And to make this a little, uh, a little clearer, maybe I'll make myself a little spookier because now I'm Shadowhunter. Um, so let's go ahead and pretend, just because I'm here by myself, I can't like call in a friend to, to work on this with me. But let's suppose I'm on another computer right now. I mean, I try to make that clearer by changing the color of my terminal. Um, and Shadowhunter is going to start working on this project. So if I um, uh, clear, and if I do a git status right now, it says I'm on br uh, branch master. If I do git log, you can see I'm on commit A, and or sorry, I'm on commit B, and before that was A. Notice, importantly, I didn't get regular Hunter's changes. I don't know that regular Hunter made commit C because regular Hunter never pushed that change to GitLab and I never pulled it to get it, that update. So right now, I think I'm up to date on this uh, branch, sorry, on this master branch with B being the most recent commit. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add a commit. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna add a, oh, not, I should edit the file. I'm going to um, edit the file and add, oh, not the line C, I'm gonna add the line D. So I'm gonna try to make a commit called D. So I'm gonna stage this, I'm gonna commit, and I'm gonna add the commit D. Now, if I do git log, you can see that head, that was master, is now on this commit D, and origin master, I still think is on B. Now I'm gonna actually go ahead and push, and this is gonna push as shadow hunter because I'm on Shadowhunter's computer. So if I go to GitLab right now, you'll see when I refresh the page that Shadowhunter added this commit D. If you look at the file on GitLab, uh, you'll see that D was the last thing added. Okay, so now let me um, undo this transformation. Let me go back to regular Hunter, okay? So regular Hunter's back. Um, Shadowhunter went behind the scenes and uh, made some changes to, for us. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and try to push my change uh, because, you know, um, that's kind of what I, I made my change C. I wanna share it with the world. I'm gonna go ahead and do git push. And then it gives me this error. It says, hey, updates were rejected because the tip of your current branch is behind its remote counterpart. Integrate changes by calling git pull before pushing again. What we just ran into was a merge conflict. We tried to push something to master, or sorry, tried to push something to origin master. We tried to push it to the remote version of our repo, but it was kind of in a state that conflicted with our change. Because remember, our change was adding this line C, and Shadowhunter just added that line D. We caused a conflict, and so GitLab rejected us. It turned us down because it says, whoa, 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 I don't know how to fix this. You gotta fix this before you push. So it's recommending that you use this thing called um, git uh, pull. I'm gonna ignore that for one second. I'm gonna use a, com a couple commands that you almost never use in practice, but I think it's important to highlight the parts going on here, and then I'll explain how this relates to the normal thing you use called git pull. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this thing called git fetch. This is the command that kind of syncs your kind of version of what you think GitLab is on to what's actually on GitLab. It doesn't change your repo necessarily. It doesn't change my master. It doesn't in in incorporate any changes. All it does is it kind of just takes a snapshot of what's on GitLab to update my state. So I know that like origin master has changed. So I'm just gonna do this git fetch right now. And now if I do a git log, notice if you look at this commit history, there's something missing. Do You see what's missing here? It's not the D commit necessarily, but that's something we haven't incorporated yet. Where's origin master? It's not there. Origin master is currently not on a commit, is, not, is on a commit that's not in our history. The reason is origin master, because we just did a fetch, is referencing that D commit somewhere else. 
So to, to make that a little bit clearer, if I do git branch dash a, um, this is a way of listing all of the branches on my repo, including um, kind of my remote branches. And you can see here I have this in my remotes, I have origin master. So I can go ahead and do something a bit weird here and check out origin master. Remember, git branch usually creates new branches. The way I just ran it just shows me branches instead. And git checkout puts you on a branch. It changes your head to refer to that branch. Now, it gives me kind of a really uh, big warning here. We've just gone into something called detached head state, which is basically saying the place where my head is right now is not a real valid commit or a real valid branch. Normally in the Git world, it only makes sense for head to be on a branch that you can make edit to, edits to. You can't make edits to this origin master thing on my computer. You kind of have to do that by pushing to GitLab. So it's just giving me a warning here that's like, be a bit careful right now because anything you do is probably fake news. Uh, you really have to go through this pushing mechanism that I'll show you, show you later. But now if I do this Git log, you'll see here that um, origin master is on this commit D and then I have before that B and E. So this is kind of my kind of copy of what's on GitLab. So now what I wanna do is I wanna incorporate the changes from origin master into my master. So I'm gonna go back to master, get out of this detached head state and go back to a regular head state where kind of my head is referring to master. So all, all well and good. Then how do I merge, a com uh, merge one branch into another? Well, that's the merge command. So I'm gonna say git merge. Which branch do I wanna merge from? I wanna merge from origin master. And now I'm gonna run into a merge conflict. This is the exact same merge conflict that we had before, for the most part. I had a change on one line on master. Shadow Hunter added that other change on origin master when they pushed. And then now when I'm trying to do this merge, they ran into a conflict. And remember, Git is not smart at resolving merge conflicts. It doesn't know how to do that. So you have to tell it. So if I go to file.txt, we see the same kind of uh, uh, setup where it says, hey, on your head, you had C, but on origin master, there was this D. What do you want the final version to be? And so maybe I'll do something like C followed by D. I'm gonna go ahead and stage this. I, or save this, I'm gonna go ahead and stage this. Then I'm gonna go ahead and commit it. And maybe I'll, again, just like before, I'll call this commit M to say, hey, um, we're kind of doing this merge commit now. And so now if I push, it will go ahead and push my changes to GitLab. And you can see now the most recent commit is M. And if you can click on that commit, it kind of shows you, hey, this is how we resolved this. We basically, in the context of this C commit that was, uh, or this D commit that was there before, we kind of just added this line. So this is what this merge commit does. Now, um, everything I just showed you with that git fetch and that git merge explicitly, you generally don't use in practice. Generally what you use is you use this command called git pull. What git pull does is it's actually just an alias for fetch update your version of GitLab to kind of make sure you're up to date with what's on GitLab and then merge those changes in. So almost always you're just going to do a one step command to git pull and it will automatically kind of cause that conflict for you. If there's one that exists, you can edit it, stage and commit. Uh, but git pull is the command you almost always use. It's very rare that you actually want to use git fetch and git merge explicitly. You usually just kind of just do this one command instead. So I just want to kind of point that out. You just do git pull. And there's kind of some stuff going on behind the scenes here where git has kind of set up the fact that your master branch is related to origin masters branches. So it, you don't have to explicitly spell that out, but we're not going to talk about this kind of like remote setup too much. So now that we've kind of understand, like in some sense, there's not a lot new here, except this idea that um, we have this kind of view of what we think GitLab is. That's kind of what our origin master is on my computer. And you can update that with git fetch or git pull. Um, but everything I just did, that merge conflict and pushing, that was all stuff we saw before. This idea of what's on origin is in some sense just another branch. It's just kept up to date. It's synced with what's on GitLab. So whenever I do a fetch or a pull, it kind of keeps those up to date. 
but it's just branches. That's actually why kind of Git is so powerful, is it actually has, even though it has a lot of complexities, it has a relatively straightforward mental model of everything's a branch, or and those branches just refer to commits, uh, which is really, really nice. Now, just to quickly kind of remind you of what we just did right here, I have this little walkthrough of the slides of every this problem I just created and how we fixed it. So normally, before when I pulled, um, my local repo had commits A and B, um, remote had A and B, I just added commit C. Remember, origin master on my version of origin master on local doesn't necessarily stay up to date. So in shadow hunter added commit D, I tried to push, we caused an error, then we needed to do a git fetch to update our view of GitLab, our local view of GitLab, so that when we did the merge, we kind of had that right commit, and then we pushed to fix everything. So that's kind of everything we did right there. Now, what I'm gonna have us do kind of in our next video is show you a slightly more practical way of trying to merge changes together that hopefully should lead to fewer merge conflicts that you have to deal with kind of locally on your computer. Um, and it's a very common practice when working on large teams, but that's kind of our focus for our next video.